So is dementia involved in this at all? Interesting that you say that. Um, it So um, oleander does cross the blood-brain barrier. And so we do think that there is probably could be some benefit in Alzheimer's. Um, and interestingly, you know, dogs get, um, we have a condition we call canine cognitive dysfunction, CCD, mm -hmm. and it is essentially Alzheimer's in dogs. It's the same disease when you look at it pathologically minus, so the plaques that people get with Alzheimer's, dogs get those as well, mm -hmm. amyloid plaques. What they don't get is what are called these neurofibrillar tangles. But other than that, the disease is the same. And the dog is a really good model for that. We haven't tested oleander for that at all. But there's a potential it would work because, again, it does cross the blood-brain barrier. So it would be interesting to look at it. So if you gave it to a person that has Alzheimer's, what do you think it would it reduce the symptoms of it or the symptoms of the Alzheimer's or? You know, I don't know yet. So studies have not been done, um, but it, 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 it might. Let's just put it that way. It would be something we should look at. So can it's definitely can, curious, right? Yeah. Yeah. Can people buy it directly from your company now, or is that something that you have to wait for an FDA approval on? Um, no, it is being. Go ahead, Mary. You're mm -hmm. the. Yeah, sure, uh, Terry. Uh, it's available. So we have our Phoenix um, Biotechnology Inc. And within that uh, company, we have a cosmetics company through Laurel Rose. So on the Laurel Rose website, um, we have Laurel RX, which is our homeopathic approved version. Uh, it has the extract in it, but it's through homeopathic standards. Um, so it's available that way. Okay. So if and it's a dropper. It is a dropper, and you could use it for your dog or for yourself. So it's uh, homeopathic approved on the human side. Um, mm -hmm. And then also through Terry's Dr. Fossum's Pet Care, uh, we cu currently launched our uh, anti-itch spray. Oh, nice. Um, which we're really excited about, but we'll also be forthcoming because I'm excited about our pipeline and being able to make, you know, nutraceutical or these wellness type products available. Um, there's also, as Terry referred to earlier, going the regulatory route. Um, obviously, that's more of an isolate. You bring just a, a straight forward, the isolate being um, the oleandrin, and you can bring that forward on, on the regulatory pathway. And what's so great is to have two offerings to say, okay, well, we can have the wellness side of it, where you have the extract and some of the beneficial uh, other things that are in it naturally and have that um, formulated. And so in the pipeline, you're working on a couple of different exciting uh, ventures, one with the anti-aging side for animals, um, and then eventually, hopefully, for the humans. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. so I love it because I get to work on both the human and uh, animal side. Oh, so the oleander at, at really, really low doses um, kills viruses, so it's RNA viruses. So we're looking at it for production animals, too, because if we can decrease their viral load, then we'll increase their feed efficiency. Sure. My sister has a puppy that is a mix of um, Mastiff and some other stuff. I don't even know what the other things are. And she just took him Friday because uh, he was had like a hacking cough. And they said that he has pneumonia. He has a virus that has turned into pneumonia. But he also has these um, almost like wart type blisters on his on his lips. Um, do you think that that did they biopsy him? They didn't. Um, did they? They didn't even aspirin and stick a needle in him. Did they? I don't <laughs> believe. I'd have to double check with her. I don't believe they biopsied them. They just said that it was part of a virus. So would the oleander help with that? I'd have to know what virus it is. It might. Um. So, uh, you know, just to be very clear, it doesn't work on every virus. Mm -hmm. We know that. Um. It works specifically on these enveloped RNA viruses. But those are the ones that typically cause the issues. Mm. Um, so we'd have to know. I, it'd be worth a try. It's not yeah. going to harm. At the do so I have a, a, actually one of our board members had his dog recently had the same thing. In June, he texted me his dog had pneumonia, wasn't eating, really, really circling the drain. And um, I, I told him just go in and ask for uh, a appetite stimulant mm -hmm. to start. 
And so he did that, and his dog started eating like crazy. And he just texted me two days ago. So this was June. He started his dog on the Oleander product, very, very low dose. Um, like normally we dose so many milligrams per kilogram. He was given like just 12 and a half milligrams, period. Mm -hmm. Not even, you know, yeah. per uh, based on weight. And he texted me a picture of his dog the other day, said that, she is like a puppy again. Oh. She's now 14. Wow. And he swears. Now, anecdotal, right? But he swears it's the Oleander. I don't know that. But it was so nice to hear yeah. that. And, you know, that sort of all that anecdotal evidence just makes you feel even better about, mm -hmm. let's get this study done. Because yeah. we're looking at it. Yeah, because we're looking at dogs getting If it better. takes that long to push it's something natural through to get approval, how long does it take a synthetic to get approved? Well, that's That's for both. So it's the same for both. Yeah. Well, it's a combination of both. Yeah. That doesn't so sound. I don't know that there. I haven't seen. Not saying it's not out there, but I haven't seen data that would say a synthetic takes as long versus a natural compound. I have not seen that. Now, what we do know. So there are there's small molecules, drugs, and then there's what we call biologics. Biologics are anything that's made inside an organism. So if you make it inside a bacteria yeah. or a cell, then it's a biologic. And then- If we've altered it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and you can tell immediately when that happens, right? Like if we look at something in a, over a scope, you can tell if it's natural or we've been fooling with it. We've altered it in many ways. So they can tell the chemical structure yeah. of it. Okay. Yeah, they can tell. That's what that um, NMN stuff is, is that Yeah, right? so NMN is the synolytic you just hit on. That's a big one, uh -huh. right? So. Our um, powerhouse of our cells is NAD. And when you take NMN, it's a precursor to NAD. Mm -hmm. So, and there are a couple others, NR is another one. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, if you look at the anti aging stuff, NMN is all over out there. NMN will be, hopefully, in our um, anti aging product as one, it's just one of the synolytics. 